You know what? I am the wrong person to ask because I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. You're, you're taking a journey through a destroyed New York. You realize Stranger Things is very popular in India. I didn't know that. It's That's a, great. It's a huge show in India. My name is Sucharata. I'm here from India representing PBR INOX, which is the largest cinema chain in the country. So we're going to be showing you from soon. Yeah, um, it's great. Your character is searching for the best pizza in New York City. What is the best pizza in New York City? You know what? I am the wrong person to ask because I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. Oh, no. Because there's so many Indian tourists in New York yeah. that I'm looking for the best pizza. You pizza. are not from here. So do you know what the best I, pizza is? I've been looking. No. I don't know. I need someone to show me the ropes. I've got Yo. some pals that live here. So they're going to yeah. show me. So Patsy's Pizza is amazing. There's so many good pizzas. I just had Scar's Pizza, which was incredible. Yes. It's it's hard to go wrong with pizza in New York. It's kind of even a really cheap, crummy piece of pizza is probably better than most pizzas around the world. It's it's very good. Uh, you realize Stranger Things is very popular in India. I didn't know that. It's That's a, great. It's a huge show in India. Are you an expert at surviving like a zombie apocalypse situation now? An expert is a generous term. I guess I'm getting better at it. What would be the top three things you would do in a scenario like this? Find cover, mm -hmm. make fire, be quiet. Makes sense. If we stay here, we die. New York City has been imagined and reimagined by filmmakers since cinema probably began. How is uh, New York City different in your film for you? And why did you and John Krasinski decide to put this in New York City? So initially the idea for New York came from in the second Quiet Place, Jaiman Hansu's character talks about day one in New York. And I think that kind of sparked the idea of, well, what happens if we see a little bit of that story? Um, so that was kind of the initial prompt from John when he had, he had seen my last movie, Pig, and wanted to kind of bring a fresh voice into the franchise. Um, and he said, you know, we want to do day one in New York, take it from there, however you'd like to. And for me, the main thing was that, yeah, we have seen a lot of movies in New York and a lot of disaster movies in New York. So it had to be a really specific character story. And it had to be a character that I hadn't really seen interacting with that kind of thing before. Yeah. Um, so I came to Sam, who uh, is just, you know, she's going through a very unique moment in her life. And it kind of shades what the end of the world would mean to her and how she would interact with it. And then she's sort of pairing with people that all have different relationships to this end of the world and to New York City. Um, so it was really focusing on it from like a character level. I have a plan. Lupita, your character is struggling with her own personal circumstances before the events of this film even occurred. Um, in the previous Quiet Place movies, one of the protagonists is this little girl who is hard of hearing. She can't hear anything and she has to kind of lead the way. Did you learn something about yourself, about being more resilient during the process of making this film? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was, this film took... Uh, a certain physical challenge uh, for me to undergo. And it was really quite humbling to, to do what I did. And uh, I found a new, I don't, it was like uh, the power of the human body is incredible, yeah. right? Like your body really, it, it takes care of you in surprising ways. And my body really took care of me in this project is what I'd say. And like, yeah, it, I was really proud of what I was able to achieve when I put my mind to it. So yeah, I, I gained a lot of um, trust yeah. in myself. One of my favorite moments from the film is when, without giving anything away, you recite a poem together. And that's really moving and it sort of, encapsulates how strangers are coming together to you know, survive this random situation. What would you say was your favorite film, a moment in the film? Hmm. My favorite moment in the film, that's definitely one of them. Yeah. I think I really enjoyed this underwater sequence that we did. Again, not trying to give too much away. There was a lot of moving parts. Yeah. Uh, there was stunts, there was complex camera work. Myself and Lupita had to uh, focus on Staying alive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was uh, great fun. But most of it was a delight, to be honest. Well, really? Most of it, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. This was, it's not a, all the time that you work in a film where that you look forward to every day. Mm. I have to say, I really genuinely looked forward to going to work every day. Uh, and I think that is testament to the man at the helm, mm. Michael Sarnowski, who is a very, he's a very loving 
gentle director. And it takes that, and, and I think that's what's interesting about what he does with the stories he tells. He There's a severity to the stories he's telling, but there's also a tenderness to yeah. them. Mm-hmm. And that tension uh, makes for an exciting day of work. He said all pizza in New York is the best pizza in New York. That's, <laughs> a, good that's, that's a very good answer. Look at him. I know, right? He's, he's such like, a diplomat. And he's like, he knows exactly what to say. He doesn't even take a second to think about it. Yeah. It's the end of days. No more people. No more New York. No more nothing. Why should people go and watch this film in the biggest theater that is in their neighborhood. I think visually, I think it's going to be very exciting to see on a big screen. It's it's huge. There's a lot of scope to it. You're really seeing New York in a way that we haven't, like, you know, you're, you're taking a journey through a destroyed New York. But even more than that, the sound in the theater, we worked so hard to, like, really nail how it sounds and how immersive that is. So yeah. if you really want to feel kind of sucked into this world and just kind of on the edge of your seat, the theater is the way to do it for this movie. It's rare to have these kind of collective experiences in the theater to gather and appreciate being quiet and be thrilled and be terrified uh, is a rare thing in cinema and it just demands us to be together and it will be uh, on a scale that the audiences won't have seen before so it's definitely worth getting tickets yeah same thing same thing these films were made to be uh experience in an immersive environment right and the, the only place you can really get that is in a cinema and uh it, they're also made to be experienced in groups mm-hmm. i think that's when it's most fun when you can hold on to the person near you mm-hmm. and have that release um uh, and yeah and be moved together it was a very um surprisingly moving experience watching this in IMAX mm, last night. Nice. Um thank you so much for chatting with me. Today. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. I'm already being given the signal that it's time for me to wrap it up. So I'm going to go do that. But thank you so much for Thank you very time. much. Thank you. Mm-hmm.